the Jehovah's Witness organization loves pedophiles. And that much is obvious, as we've seen in recent years, from the Royal Commission to the court cases to the many very sad stories that have come out of this wicked organization. Personally, I do have experience with it in my own life and with when we were leaving, the fact that there were no pedophiles near our children that we were not made aware of. I'll get to that. I'm going to start going back a little bit into my own history of child abuse within the organization, so to speak. I was sexually abused by an older child um, who I know went on not to become a witness, but at the time was attending meetings with their family. And I hold nothing against that child, obviously things had happened to that child and they had just passed on what happened to them down to me, um, very unfortunately. But not to focus on that, more to focus on the psychology that exists within the JW organization. The victim shaming, victimization, the way that we, even as very young children who may be facing this abuse, and I was not the only one to face this particular type of abuse, um, more than one person and friends I knew um, also encountered um, this particular area of abuse. I was age five when it started and I was around age 10 when it stopped. And even as a small child, you understand not to say anything. And I know that this doesn't always fall under just in the Jehovah's Witness organization, but it is very much the culture within this organization to silence victims. And that's how I felt as a child. I felt unable to tell my parents because I was aware of what disfellowshipping was. I was aware of what shunning was at a very young age. And I felt that I was responsible for what had happened to me. And that sort of psychology, I know I'm not alone in having felt this way uh, and been treating tre and not having, pardon me, difficult subject to talk about. I know I'm not alone in feeling like I did um, because that is how we are conditioned. We're conditioned to punish ourselves within the organization, to silence ourselves within the organization. And so that goes on from one generation to the next. I did eventually uh, find a voice and realize that I do not have to hold any shame attached to what happened to me, that I'm not alone in what happened to me, and that there are far worse cases, not to minimize my own experience because all of us who have suffered this kind of abuse um, have a unique experience and we have every right to feel all the feelings that we do um, towards what happened to us. And that sort of psychology, now having left Jehovah's Witnesses, it really bothers me that even as a child, I wasn't able to voice this to my parents. Um, I remember even around age 18, being on a uh, family holiday, and being racked with guilt because I felt like I was going to actually see this person who um, I'd had these encounters with. And I got myself into such a panic and I was just thinking, I'm going to die at Armageddon. I'm going to die at Armageddon. And I haven't told my family and that I'm an evil person and I'm a bad person and I let it happen. And it took a good long while into well into adulthood before I reached the conclusion that I was not to blame. Um, and before I could talk about it, talk about it openly and not feel that shame um, attached to what I went through. But that really hit home to me in my teenage years, fast forward a little bit. Um, not to harp on too much about my early years, but in my teenage years is when I realized that 
my experience wasn't unique. And I'm really surprised that, and maybe I did deep down start waking up in those years as a teenager, I don't know, could be. That's why it was easier to wake up uh, as an adult, even if I did fight it somewhat when Paddy uh, um, told me about his own feelings towards the organization. But there were a group of teenagers in my congregation. There were about, I think, 12 or 13 of us all similar ages within three or four years of each other. And a handful of them at least had encountered some form of child sexual abuse. And I'm not, I am not exaggerating that. There are at least eight people that I can think of um, that encountered this, um, whether that, I don't know, varying ages, whether that was their teenage years or early years or a whole broad range um, of ages and a lot that I didn't find out about until I was an adult, which is very sad because you almost feel like you could have had someone to talk to who understood you, but we were all so silenced that none of us felt safe to be able to share our pain with another person who had gone through something similar. It's a very, very sad way to exist, really. And it does make me quite angry when I think about it now that so many young people um, like myself were left feeling broken and acting like nothing had happened, putting on a good face, but inside thinking that we deserved to die, we were unlovable, um, that we couldn't be honest, that we were dishonest people because we couldn't tell anyone about our situation that that made us bad and not see the situation for what it was. There was one paedophile in particular that, um, I presume he was a registered paedophile because he had been previously uh, disfellowshipped, uh, I think multiple times, I can't remember now. And he was known in multiple congregations to be a paedophile. He was allowed into our circle of friends despite the elders knowing, apparently. And that bothered me so much because one of my very close friends was themselves abused by this man. Of course, silenced by a watchtower, we're told that uh, they could go to the elders if, go to the elders, pardon me, go to the police if they wanted to. But really, what did, did they really need to do that? Would it just bring more shame upon Jehovah's name? Again, shame coming up. But I feel quite angry that our parents were not notified and were not told that we as a group of teenagers were left alone with this person who abused another young person within our circle of friends for a number of years in a row. And they were just left to their devices, left freely among us. Why? And for what purpose? I just thought I'd put that out there that I feel like it makes my blood boil. I mean, did any of you personally experience situations like that, that once you left, you found out, or even as an adult, found out about people you were allowed to mix with um, in your teenage years or in your younger years who were known pedophiles? I mean, how did that make you feel as an adult? I know for me, Personally, it makes me feel quite angry. I feel quite disgusted because as a parent, I would like to know and I would like to have the choice to decide whether my child could be around that person or not. But that choice is taken away from parents within the organization and it leads to damaging consequences. I mean, even going forward, to our own congregation where we eventually did leave the organization from. We had a young family, of course, when we left, um, two small girls. And it was only after I left that I found out about one brother who I would never have pegged 
for being a pedophile who was, who was in close proximity to our young family. Again, another one who had also had uh, problems with um, pedophilia in the congregation, although not a registered um, pedophile, I don't believe. And then I started hearing about also surrounding congregations where we'd had our small children around these people. And I know then, and speaking now as a parent, that I would have liked to have the choice. I and any other parents, do we, do we, have, we deserve to, we have the right to, to decide who our children are around if that person is deemed a danger to children. I know all too well how dangerous someone can be to another individual in this respect. And the choice was completely taken away from us. Even with my experience with the elders, when they uh, came to my house unannounced, I asked them outright, tell me, do we have a problem with pedophiles in our hall? I had noticed that they were asking, first of all, they were putting a brother at the back of the hall to watch people coming in and out the bathroom. Then announcements were starting to be made about making sure that our children did not go alone to the bathroom. And all the alarm bells were going off. I remember asking them when they came to the house, I said, are there pedophiles in our congregation? I have the right to know as a parent, they refused to answer me, completely refused. And I guess, as we all know from a previous video, that that was a breaking point for me. And we did end up, Paddy and I, disassociating after that particular drop-in from the elders. But I thought it was worth noteworthy to talk about the subject because there is so there are so many aspects to it, if you will, and so many things that subtleties that you almost don't, I guess it's the conditioning, isn't it? The conditioning not to notice these things or to think that it's in Jehovah's hands or the elders have it. They've got it covered. They don't have it covered. They are not mental health specialists. They are not therapists. They are not doctors. They are not police. And yet, they take on those titles as if they are. And it is wrong. It is plainly wrong. And it is clear from the way that the organization deals with pedophiles and deals with victims, right down to children. Me, I remember clearly being age five, blaming myself, and feeling I deserve to die at Armageddon. And that, that is directly the result of Watchtower. Watchtower's conditioning and the problems within. And I do fully feel justified in saying that the Jehovah's Witness organization loves pedophiles because quite clearly they do and i appreciate you letting me have my two cents because sometimes it is quite therapeutic to let it out but i know it's a heavy subject and i know that i'm not alone there are many of us who have experienced abuse in some form and please know that it is never too late to ask for help it's never too late to talk to someone um, it's never too late to reach out if you could even just have one person to talk to, do it. And please don't ever feel alone. Please reach out if you need help. Um, that's what we're here for. And that's why we have reignited um, our channel. It's taken us time to step back, heal, and come back and offer the assistance that we so gratefully received when we were leaving and dealing with very heavy subjects um, during uh, 
uh, process of extinct Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, thank you very much for listening to me. Um, and please, uh, if you need any help um, and you need someone to talk to, we're here. <laughs>